Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we are talking about the distributive property. If you don't know what the distributive property is, just watch this video. You will know once it's done. And if you don't, if you still have a question, no worries. Just drop your question down in the comments below and I will get to it and respond to you. Uh, try to clear things up to the best of my ability. So let's say we have something like 3 times 4 plus 2. Well, following our order of operations, we know we need to do what's inside the parentheses first. So we could rewrite this as 3 multiplied by 6, adding the 4 and the 2, and then that would give us 18. And then that's all fine and dandy, but what if we can't add what is inside of the parentheses? What if they're not like terms? What if we're looking at something like this? 3 multiplied by 4 plus 2x. Now we've got a variable in the mix and we can't just simply add 4 and 2x to get a number like 6 and multiply 3. But we can still simplify this expression by using the distributive property. And the distributive property, it's basically all in the name. It just tells us when we've got a number like this uh, outside of some parentheses where there's some addition or subtraction being done in the parentheses, all you have to do is distribute the 3 to every quantity inside the parentheses. So this becomes 3 times 4, which is 12, plus, plus 3 times 2x, which is 6x. And that is how you can simplify this. And we can see if x equals 1, like it did up here, where we just had 4 plus 2, then we would get 12 plus 6, which is indeed 18. Now, again, the distributive property only goes across addition and subtraction. So suppose we had 3 multiplied by 4 times 2x. Well, we would just do what's in the parentheses first because we can multiply unlike terms. So this would be 3 multiplied by 8x, and that would just be 24x. So you only need it when you've got parentheses, and inside the parentheses you've got addition or subtraction. For example, if we had 3 multiplied by 4 minus 3x plus 2x squared, well, we don't have any like terms in here. We can't subtract 3x from 4. We can't add 2x squared to anything. So we have to use our distributive property and multiply 3 by everything in the parentheses. Again, if we had division or multiplication in here, we could use that to get just one quantity. But if we have to do this, we get 12 minus 9x plus 6x squared, multiplying the 3 all throughout the parentheses. Let's take a quick look at what it would be like if we had division in the parentheses. Suppose we had something like 8. Whoa, I wrote a 3 and I said 8. That's okay. Let's say we had something like 3 divided by 2. Well, we can rewrite this as a fraction and have this be 3 multiplied by the fraction 3 over 2. And that's just equal to 3 over 1 multiplied by 3 over 2, which equals 9 halves. And that's how the distributive property works. All you have to do is make sure that you multiply what's outside the parentheses by every quantity inside the parentheses. And you want to make what's inside the parentheses as simplified as you can. So in the end, you'll get it down to a point where all you have is stuff that you can't add. You can't add or subtract unlike terms. And that's when you break out your distributive property and multiply all throughout the parentheses. Hence the name distribute, because you're distributing the three. So I hope this video helped explain the distributive property, how to use it and identify it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or need anything clarified. I would be happy to help you understand uh, more by elaborating in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear There's a light where I float That erases all